Now that we have discussed mutual shading in shed-based PV designs, we can discuss a tool involving a simplified simulation, which allows the study and optimizations of shed-based PV systems and mutual shadings. This tool is the Unlimited Sheds Orientation option. Let's start by creating a new project. We will set the location of the project to be Geneva and use the default media file for this site. Save the project as Unlimited Sheds and open the Orientation Parameter dialog. Set the field type to Unlimited Sheds. Note that Unlimited here refers to the length of the shed. There are a discrete number of sheds in the simulation, but they will mutually shade each other as if they are infinitely long planes. Another way of saying this is that the edge effects are ignored. This approximation is only used to calculate the fraction of shaded PV surface. The simulation of power generation is done with a finite number of PV modules. The graphic shows a cross-sectional view of the sheds. Recall from the last video that when designing a system with sheds, we want to decrease the shading limit angle and increase the ground coverage ratio. The data fields below allow us to modify the orientation and shed parameters. As we decrease the plane tilt, the shading limit angle also decreases, but the GCR stays the same. Increasing the pitch will decrease the shading limit angle. If we want to keep the shading limit angle constant, increasing the tilt requires a subsequent increase in the pitch between the sheds. This will decrease the GCR. The azimuth and the number of sheds will not have any influence on the GCR or the shading limit angle. The inactive bands are part of the support structure, which are not covered by the PV modules. Modifying the bottom inactive band does not change the mutual shading results. Modifying the top inactive band, on the other hand, does. You can also modify the shape of the mutual sheds using the mouse. Clicking and dragging the top of the inactive band or active bands will increase the size of either band. Clicking and dragging on the bottom of the active band allows you to move the active collector band up and down. This will change the length of the bottom inactive band. Clicking and dragging the bottom of the inactive band allows you to modify the pitch. The electrical effect is an advanced feature that is outside the scope of this tutorial. Let's reset the parameters to a 6 meter pitch and a plane tilt of 25 degrees. Let's also use a collector bandwidth of 3 meters with top and bottom inactive bands of 0.02 meters. Clicking on the shading graph will show the sun path and the mutual shadings. Each point of this graphic represents a height azimuth couple, which represents the sun position in space. The top dotted line shows all directions for which 1% of the surface of sheds are shaded. Whenever the sun is below the dotted curve, mutual shading occurs. There are also lines to show when mutual shading will cover 20% or 40% of the array. Close the graph and change the azimuth to 20 degrees. Now, when you reopen the graph, you can see a significant shift in the shading profile. The mutual shadings are more pronounced in the evening. This means that when installing shed systems, it is very important to choose an azimuth facing south when in the northern hemisphere, or north when in the southern hemisphere. Any deviation will increase the shading losses. Change the azimuth back to zero degrees. Note that this configuration produced a GCR of 50% and a 
and a shading limit angle of 21.4 degrees. The next graph shows the effect of modifying the tilt of the sheds, keeping the limit angle constant. Now click on the Show Optimization button. This is a pedagogical tool to understand the shed optimization issues. On this plot, the vertical axis shows the gain of your system with respect to the yield on a horizontal plane. The horizontal axis represents the shed tilt. It is important to note here that the pitch is not being held constant. The shading limit angle is being held constant. Therefore, the pitch is being increased when the tilt increases. The green curve shows the optimization of just a single plane at different tilt angles. This is the result of the transposition model. This is the irradiance received by the first shed in front that is not subject to mutual shading. The black curve takes mutual shadings into account, and the orange curve takes electrical shading effects into account for a more advanced analysis. In blue, you can see the ground coverage ratio at different points in the graph. The GCR increases as the tilt angle decreases, because with a smaller tilt angle, you can pack sheds closer together to get the same shading limit angle. If we zoom out of this plot by clicking on this button on the x-axis, you can see that the optimum tilt for a shed configuration and the optimal tilt for this shading angle are quite different. The maximum yield on the first shed without shadings is around 37 degrees, or as the maximum of the shaded curve is lower, about 32 degrees here. Keep in mind that this maximum on this curve is only a maximum energy yield for a given shading limit angle. Many people wonder about the optimal configuration of a shed system. This is not a trivial problem, as in reality we have to optimize for energy, cost, area, etc. This involves several parameters, the tilt, the pitch, installable power, price of energy, the supports, etc. When installing sheds at a tilt of 30 degrees, we see that we can only install a module area corresponding to 50% of the available area, with a gain of efficiency on the order of 15%. If you put your modules quasi-horizontally, say at 3 degrees, you have a loss of efficiency of 10%, but you can install almost double the PV modules in the same area. Moreover, the supports will be more simple, with less wind sensitivity, and lighter. Because of this, the supports at lower tilt angles are cheaper. At a lower tilt angle, you will also be less sensitive to the module azimuth. Given this information, let's change our tilt angle to 32 degrees. Now we can close out of the orientation. We can set the same system parameters as our first project. 50 square meters, 300 watt peak generic modules, and a 7.5 kilowatt inverter. With this system set, we can run the simulation. Here we can view the system production, etc., for our PV system in this configuration. There is also a similar orientation configuration for trackers called unlimited trackers. This is outside the scope of this tutorial, but it works very similarly to the unlimited sheds configuration. In this tutorial, we discuss the unlimited sheds orientation configuration in PVSYST. We explored how to modify the parameters within the tool to run a first approximation simulation to design a row-based PV system on a flat surface.